Hello, my name is Nicolas Hadjubaldelis, and my talk is on the characterization of the anisotropic response of wire and arc additively manufactured thin wall stainless steel. This research is a collaboration between the University of Cyprus, Imperial College London, and it's supported by the Alan Turing Institute. And the authors are myself, Ben Weber, and Professor Leroy Gardner. I will first talk about uh, wire and arc additive manufacturing, the material testing that was performed, and then describe the elastic and inelastic response of the material. Then I will present a summary of the research findings and potential applications before drawing my conclusions. WAM stands for Wire and Arc Additive Manufacturing, which is a directed energy deposition technique, which uses a robotic arm in conjunction with a welding equipment, um, an electric, electric arc as a heat source, and wire and shielding gas as consumables. Here you can see the production process. A welding wire is fed through the welding machine. Um, the robot follows pre-described coordinates from a 3D computer model to form the 3D geometry of the structure. WAM allows the production of bespoke structural components that are not technologically or economically feasible with conventional techniques, like uh, the structural steel connector you can see here. To study the mechanical and microstructural properties of one material, Kivello et al. from Imperial College London conducted a series of tensile coupon tests. You can hear more about these tests uh, in the talk of uh, Professor Leroy Gardner. Um, Kivello et al. tested uh, one material in three different loading directions, relative to the position directions, uh, namely theta equals 0, theta equals 45, and theta equals 90 degrees where theta is the angle between the deposition direction and the loading direction. Tensile tests were performed on both machined and as built coupons, with the machine essentially being smoothened in order to remove the surface undulations. Here you can see the initial range of the stress strain curves in the case of theta equals 90 degrees. You can see that the as built coupons demonstrated a weaker response in the machine, which is attributed to the surface undulations. The undulations induce eccentricities and thus localize bending in the material. If we look uh, at the stress strain curves uh, again, uh, we can see a strongly uh, anisotropic response, which essentially means that the Young's modulus strength and ductility of the material are highly dependent on the direction of loading. This anisotropy has been attributed to the strong crystallographic texture due to the solidification under a thermal gradient. So uh, this research work utilizes the experimental data from the aforementioned study, which uh, tested a grade uh, 308 LSI austenitic stainless steel under monotonic uniaxial loading and displacement control. In total, 12 machined and 39 as built coupons were tested. And in the bottom right here, you can see the definition of uh, orientation theta, which is the angle between the deposition direction and the loading direction. In the test, digital image correlation was used to measure the full surface strain field during the tests. And this has revealed a non uniform strain field and thus demonstrated that material anisotropy um, is present in a qualitative manner. So the objectives of this work were to characterize the anisotropic material response, establish a modeling approach that can capture the, this response in both the elastic and inelastic ranges, and to report the key input parameters required to describe it. Starting with the elastic Starting with the definition of the adopted coordinate systems, uh, the principal material axes are aligned with uh, uh, the position direction. So one is along the position direction, two is perpendicular to that. And then the Cartesian axes, as I mentioned, are at an angle theta with respect to the deposition direction. Now we've utilized an orthotropic plane stress material model to describe the elastic mechanical response. Orthotropic materials are a subset of the anisotropic materials, um, which in their full form uh, need 21 elastic constants to be described. And uh, orthotropic materials have three mutually orthogonal planes of symmetry. P 
plane stress conditions were assumed owing to the uh, thin wealth nature of the studied elements. And in conjunction with the reciprocal equation you can see here, um, we can get the reduction of the uh, number of uh, independent constants down to four. Essentially, we require two Young's moduli, one Poisson's ratio, and the uh, in-plane shear modulus of the material in its principal material axis. In terms of, with respect to the Cartesian coordinate system, we can get the stress strain relationships using uh, this expression, where the compliance matrix S is given uh, in this form uh, and comprises the um, four uh, independent elastic constants, and the transformation matrix that uh, is given in terms of cos and sine theta. So, using these uh, relationships, we can get the transformation relationships between the material properties in the Cartesian coordinate system and the elastic constants in the principal material coordinate system. So here essentially we have four expressions relating EX, EY, nu, XY, and GXY with the four independent elastic constants uh, of the material. We can use uh, the first one to get an expression for the shear modulus um, which requires the, the, the value for a third Young's modulus, EX45 in this case, which is defined as the Young's modulus in the case of theta equals 45. Um, this corresponds to off-axis uh, loading, where essentially the material is not loaded along its principal axis, but at an angle to them. So in this way, we can get the shear modulus without having to conduct any shear tests. Looking at the results now, and specifically the Young's modulus in the case of the machined coupons, we can see that compared to conventionally produced stainless steel, which has a Young's modulus of 200 gigapascal, the underlying one material exhibits a lower uh, Young's modulus uh, when theta equals 0 and theta equals 90, and a higher modulus when theta equals 45. Uh, owing to the effect of the surface undulations, the as-built coupons exhibit lower effective Young's moduli than the machine coupons. In terms of the Poisson's ratio, we can see, again, this is for the machine case, uh, we can see that we get higher ratios when theta equals 0 and theta equals 90. And I'm comparing here uh, with the conventional produced stainless steel and the value of 0 0.3, but a much lower ratio when theta equals 45. Now, in conjunction with the orthotropic material model, we used an optimization procedure to minimize the difference between the properties measured directly in the tests and the values predicted by the model. So we have two sets of results. One is the measured values. The other one is the optimized values. The optimization routine minimizes the difference between the three Young's moduli, the three Poisson's ratios, such that the reciprocal equation and transformation relationships still hold. Here you can see the variation of the Young's modulus with respect to the orientation at 0, 45, and 90 degrees, the individual uh, results, and the mean result. We can do the same with the Poisson's ratio. And um, using the optimized values, we can get the variation of the Young's modulus for any orientation, and we can compare that to the conventionally produced stainless steel. We can do the same for the Poisson ratio and the shear modulus. <laughs> uh, note that these variations are symmetric with respect to all other quadrants, and also that in the case of the machined coupons, the optimization procedure had a minimal effect on the variation of the elastic constants. Therefore, the orthotropic model uh, can capture the response very accurately. However, in the case of the as-built coupons, since due to the fact that the geometric effect influences the effective elastic properties, we have the uh, material not demonstrating a purely orthotropic response. However, uh, when we combine the optimization procedure with the orthotropic material model, as you can see here on the left, we can get a very good approximation of the response. Therefore, Combining the orthotropic material model with the proposed optimization procedure, we can capture both the inherent material isotropy, but also the geometric effect due to the surface undulations. For the inelastic mechanical response, we use the classical yield criterion to describe the anisotropic yielding of the one material. 
in term, which is given in terms of the normal and shear stresses um, and the reference yield stress, which here was taken as equal to the 0.2% proof stress when theta equals zero degrees. The constants F, G, H, and N are given by R value which can be obtained using the measured yield stresses with respect to the principal material axis. Um, and we also have the sigma uh, bar 45 in the case of R12, which is the measured yield stress when theta equals 45 degrees. By utilizing the average 0.2% proof stresses, we got um, the R values listed below for the three different coupon types. To summarize, to describe the anisotropic material response of warm elements, we can use uh, an orthotropic plane stress material model for the elastic response and the heel yield criterion for the inelastic response. And to simulate the behavior uh, in the finite element software Abacus, we can use the elastic uh, lamina command for the elastic range and the plastic potential command for the inelastic range. Uh, for the inelastic range, we also uh, we can also use the Ramberg Osgood parameters in order to describe the rounded stress strain response of uh, the stainless steel material. The key input parameters are given here uh, for the underlying material and the undulating uh, as built material in terms uh, for the elastic response, the inelastic response, and the Ramberg Osgood parameters. These parameters are given in the recently submitted uh, journal version of this paper uh, with in, the, in thin wall structures. And uh, this approach and the proposed values were used in the finite element simulations of the MX3D bridge, which has recently been installed in Amsterdam, and opens up opportunities uh, towards the enhancement of the mechanical performance of warm structures uh, by optimizing both the location of the material, but also the orientation of the printed material. To conclude, warm thin walled stainless steel elements exhibit a distinctly anisotropic material behavior which is due to the solidification under a thermal gradient. We have established a modern approach that can capture this response in both the elastic and inelastic ranges. Specifically, an orthotropic plane stress material model can be used for the elastic response and the yield criterion for the inelastic response. We have shown that the experimental results can match, um, match the theoretical predictions closely. And we have reported uh, the key input parameters required to describe um, the anisotropic response. Uh, this uh, approach can be used in finite element modeling and future numerical and optimization studies. Thank you very much for your attention.